Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, and we resume our study in verse number 7. So get your Bible if you can, open it up to Philippians chapter 3, and we will begin in just a minute. A reminder to you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, listen from four complete series going back over 36 years. It's all archived for you at thebibleversebyverse.com. As always, all you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Philippians 3, beginning in verse 7. But what things were gained to me, talking about his religious resume, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but rubbish, that I may win Christ. What a change in the Apostle Paul's attitude. He had been so religious in the past. Now all those works that he counted on to make him good enough to go to heaven after he died, he says, just a bunch of trash to me. Paul says, I consider all my religious accomplishments just lost, nothing. It's true. Our good works are nothing. Not if they're done in an attempt to be saved. Not if they're done in an attempt to even contribute to our eternal salvation. Our good works are nothing. They are vain. They are rubbish, as Paul says. They're just play money as far as God is concerned when it comes to being valuable enough to earn eternal life they're just play money because they're worthless now when Paul realized this and he had a whole lot of play money too but when he realized this he then quit trying to earn his way into heaven by doing his religious deeds when Paul realized that he was spiritually bankrupt, that all he had was play money, he quit trying. And Paul traded in all of his religious works, all of his monopoly money to lay hold of the cross of Jesus Christ instead. He put his trust in Jesus instead of his religious play money. And it is important to understand that all the good things that we may do combined with all the bad that we may not do is still not enough to make us right with God. Not even close. Paul says, I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, waste, that I may win Christ. And this is the place where every one of us needs to come to. Every sinner needs to come to this exact same place. We need to realize that our good works are not enough and that we need to trust completely in Jesus Christ. Because if you're not trusting completely in him, if you think it's sort of a cooperative program between the cross of Christ and you keeping certain rules and regulations or doing good works, you're not trusting in Christ. That's not trusting in Christ. It's all or nothing, black and white. And one, one day Paul looked at all his religious accomplishments and then he looked at the cross of Jesus Christ and he knew that he had to choose which one he would trust in to get him into heaven. If he chooses to go with his religious works, then he gets to keep his high position in the Jewish religion. 
his good salary, and his place of prominence in Jewish society. He gets to keep all that. Paul would also get to keep his good name that he had and the admiration of many people for being so religious. If he chooses Christ, then he must humble himself. He must also admit that his religious works, which were many, were worthless, along with all of his accomplishments, worthless with regards to getting him into heaven. Paul would also have to admit, by trusting in Christ, that he had been wrong. Think about that. That by receiving Jesus Christ and going public with it, Paul was also admitting that he had been wrong to persecute and kill Christians. And that was a lot of pride for him to swallow. But Paul chose Christ and he lost everything. As far as the world was concerned, he lost everything. But at least Paul did not go to hell when he died. At least that. And that's a pretty big at least, don't you think? Verse 9. Let's read 8 along with it. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but rubbish, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, when Paul realized that no one was good enough to make it to heaven on the basis of their own good works, whatever they might be, and when he realized that he was not even good enough to get right with God, though, though his religious works were many. He, when he realized that he, not even he was good enough to get right with God and get into heaven after he died, when he realized that God was offering him the gift of perfect righteousness, the gift of perfect righteousness through the Lord Jesus Christ, if he would only quit trusting in his religious works, quit trying to earn his way to heaven and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God would give him that gift of righteousness. When he understood that, Paul did it. People need to remember that we need to score 100% on the holiness test throughout our entire life to be good enough to get into heaven. You need to understand that. And I know many of you religious folks don't understand that. You've never heard this. It's true. It's what the Bible teaches. It's what Paul is talking about right here. You have to score 100% on the holiness test from the day one of your life until the last second. But no one scores 100%. No one ever scored 100% except the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Jesus if we repent and receive him as Lord and Savior, Jesus will give us his perfect score. He will credit it to our spiritual account if we only repent of our sin and receive him as Lord and Savior and trust him in his finished work on the cross. And that's going to make us then, and it's the only thing then, that makes us acceptable to God because it's the only way we can have that perfect score of 100%. Only through Jesus. That's it. And that's what Paul realized. So he was smart enough by the grace of God to go for it. 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. There is so much in here. Jesus could have had his own way. He didn't need to go to the cross. If you think that he was looking forward to the pain and the suffering, if you think he was looking forward to the humiliation of the cross, you are dead wrong. I know he didn't. 
Because in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, if there's any way that, in essence, people can be saved apart from me going to the cross, Father, let it happen. If not, not my will, but thy will be done. It wasn't his. It wasn't his. He wasn't thrilled to do that, but he was thrilled to do the Father's will, even if it meant the cross, which it did. But he, even then, he could have backed out. But instead, Jesus died to self, and he allowed himself to be arrested, falsely accused, mocked, have men tear his back literally to shreds with a whip and a cat o' nine tails, and then be in a bloody mess, open sores, understatement, allowing himself to be nailed to the cross. And he did all of that, every bit of it, for us. And Paul says, Paul says here, I want to share in the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ. How in the world do we share in the sufferings of Jesus Christ when he already did the work on the cross? Paul says, I want to share in the sufferings of Christ. But how? To obey this verse and to share in the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are asked to do the same thing that Jesus did, meaning this, no, not go to the cross, meaning this, that we are asked to say no to temptation when it comes our way and no to self, which is always a temptation, and to also say yes to doing good as Jesus did. That means following the word of God. When every cell in our body is crying out to be satisfied in a lustful way, we remain true to the word of God and obedient to God. That's what Jesus did. And that's what we're asked to do. When we use our free will to die to self, then the power of Jesus Christ will kick in and it will enable us to do it. And therefore in the process, share in the sufferings of Christ, not his physical death, but saying no to the flesh. This is what we are called to do. Because it is suffering to our flesh, as far as our flesh is concerned, to say no to its desires. But it also means too, by the way, do the right thing in spite of what our flesh wants us to do, but also do the right thing, even if it costs us our life. That also involves sharing in the sufferings of Christ. So it's very important. That's what God is asking us to do. 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, all believers are going to be raised from the dead. And that is not something that we have to strive for. The only question is, the only question is, which road is going to get us there? See, a martyr's death or a natural death really doesn't matter. A martyr's death, a natural death, or maybe we will be around when Jesus returns, which was Paul's hope. But we're all going to be raised from the dead. It's just a matter of which road's going to get us there, which road's going to get us into our grave. And Paul hoped to be around when Jesus returned, but he wasn't. But Paul looked forward to the resurrection. It's the one thing that drove him. He looked forward to that because he knew that his work for the Lord was not in vain. Paul was working out his own salvation with fear and trembling. And he was looking forward to life in his new body on the new earth. And that's what encouraged Paul to keep going and to finish the race. He was looking forward to a better time and the rewards of his faithfulness to Jesus. And that's what we're called to do. He who perseveres to the end shall be saved, said Jesus. Hang in there no matter how rough it gets. Don't deny Christ. Keep living for him. Confess when you fail. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and God's word. And when you take a break from studying at the Bible, verse by verse.com, you can go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Doing that, praying for me and the Word of God, that all makes you a part of this ministry, and I'd appreciate it very much. 
And don't forget, you can study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Also, until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you for spending this time with me and studying the Word of God with me. I always appreciate that very much. So long.